Welcome back to another episode of the Harbor Site. And again, we are going to be talking about dicks. And uh, I got a good buddy on here, Allie G. And uh, if those of you guys saw me on Instagram running on the treadmill in the dick costume, well, Miss Capper got that idea from her. So we completely copied it, completely ripped it off. But uh, before we start this episode, I just want to say this episode is sponsored by Core Medical. Um, this month, you know, we're talking about uh, erectile dysfunction and how it's kind of a, a kind of a sneaky situation with men. And there's a lot more men dealing with some sort of form of ED, and we don't even know why or what. And uh, so all month, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about the nutrition side, the the hormone side, the lifestyle, the mental side. And if you haven't caught the episode with Kirk Parsley, that's right behind this one. Go do that. And uh, if you are out there, if your partner or you are having issues with ED, um, it's nothing to be ashamed about because we have the technology now. We have the smarts to help it out. So get in contact with Core Medical and uh, at least at a minimum get blood tested. And I hope you enjoy this very, very funny podcast with Ali G. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Harbor Site. And uh, again, we are still talking about dicks. And uh, I'm, <laughs> I am on with Ali, and I'm gonna brag. I'm gonna wel- welcome to the uh, to the podcast and the video and wherever else we put this. Um, but I'm gonna brag on her a little bit. Uh, we met at a TSAT conference a few years ago, and she was talk. You were talking about was it? A, it was a testosterone talk, right? Yeah. 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 And I, that was actually one of the first times that I had heard a giving a hormonal talk um, in, in regards to performance, you know, physical performance, especially in the military, the tactical world, um, my entire life, my entire career. So it was kind of like mind blowing. And then we actually got you to come out to, I think it was the second Raider product seminar. And you That's- had in, in your presentation, and for those, I wish I could post this and maybe I'll, maybe I'll see if I can get it from you and then put some slides up in the video portion of this podcast. Um, it wasn't really a, it wasn't really a, uh, a presentation. It was more of a slideshow of, of penis memes. Am I inaccurate? That's a great way to explain it. <laughs> so Dude, that my was slides her- are funny. Yeah, that was her presentation was was a presentation of penis memes, but it got the point across and it was it was very good. So so welcome and uh tell us a little bit about what you do and and uh how you kind of got into all of this. Um now that I think about it, I think the acronym TSAC totally has a whole nother meaning now. <laughs> <laughs> I just never realized that. So when you said that, I'm like, oh yeah, T bag, T sac, whatever. Anyway. Um Yeah, I live in Greenwich, Connecticut, and I work as a fitness professional, both online and in person. And basically, my entire clientele is men from in their 20s up upwards into their 50s and 60s. And, you know, the shortest version that I give people is I started out in golf fitness because I'm a strength and conditioning coach by heart. And with golf comes type A men who tend to be the most intense, driven you know, wanting to win guys. And when there's so much misinformation about men's health out there and men refuse to go to the doctor, they need somebody to help, you know, be their advocate. So that's kind of like the abbreviated version of how I got into doing men's health work and doing nutrition coaching with them. And here I am. I would never have thought, (laughs) I never would have thought that what you just said and then golf would go together because I'm not a golfer. No one does. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. They're like, so wait, you do golf fitness, but then talk about boners. And I'm like, oh yeah, you need one to play golf. And they're like, what? <laughs> and, <laughs> but it works. Cause I was like, okay, all my clients are men. Like women don't really seek out golf fitness the way men do. And right. I was like, okay, this is my entire clientele. I would learn as much as I can about men and men's health. And Hey, has somebody that who went to you? all girls school for 11 years, boom. Has that helped you with your relationship with Charlie? I think so. It was really funny the other night. I was I was um, describing the process in which a man gets an erection and all the uh, you know chemical and and um, physical things that have to happen to orchestrate this event. And he was yeah. just sitting there staring at me. And I was like, "You had no idea all this." He's like, 
<laughs> and I was like, how do you like it? Your wife knows all of this stuff. He doesn't care. But it's just, you just so those you know how listening, he is. He's like, Charlie was what? actually, and, and I absolutely love that you guys got hooked up. That is just so super cool. He was one of the first uh, strength conditioning coaches at MARSOC. So yep. Josh and I met him early, early on in the very initial phases of of the whole, you know, Perez program and everything that they're doing at, at the, at the component now, um, which was super cool. And then to see you guys, did you guys actually meet at TSAC? Is that how that happened? No, we've known each other like 12 years. In the oh, industry. really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. very cool. So we've had tons of mutual friends and everything. So it's just a timing issue. What a small, what a freaking uh, yeah. small world. Isn't it? Yeah. And now it's he's so married crazy. to the golf dick lady. Yeah. And he's so proud of it. He's so proud of that. <laughs> I, <laughs> you know, our personalities in that sense are co like complete 180s. Like he, I was like, you know, you could be a guest on my show one day. And he's like, no, I'm not I'm talking about sex. And, <laughs> and I'm like, sex, dicks, everything. <laughs> so did you like my little, uh, my, my coming out about the dick talk for May uh, clip on, <laughs> on Instagram? It's nothing hard to move it. <laughs> it is horrible. Like not only oh that, but if that fan gets turned off, you and your face is in there, Done. you will die. So listen, <laughs> everybody that saw that clip, it's a lot, literally a lot harder than it seems. Uh, so I wore that for Halloween, right? And that's where Allie said she she had. Yeah, that's seen where we it. got and the idea. Yeah. Yeah. So so I remember I filmed like a little workout thing that took like ten minutes. I was like, I need to take this thing off. Because it, it was die. just so restrictive and you feel like you're going to die. And then everyone was like, what's that red thing on there? Is that like a, supposed to be a herpy or something? And I was like, no, that's a fan. <laughs> that's what keeps you alive like, inside your oh dick suit. Oh my God. I still have it in the closet though. Oh, I'm not getting rid of the dick suit. That, that's a staple now. Yeah, the dick suit is- $20 is ever spent. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So where did you, when did you first- I say when and how did you first really get into studying or kind of tracking um, erectile dysfunction in conjunction with performance? Like, how did that happen for you? Um, Other than just being a normal fan of penises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just from birth. Um, <laughs> so uh, I want to say... 2008 was when I, I first got into golf fitness and going back to the golf thing. So then I was like, all right, I'm going to handle nutrition coaching with guys because they were like taking random supplements from the shelves and places, as you know, nothing in vitamin shop actually really works. Um, and I was like, what are you taking? Why? Like, and no one knew the answer. And I couldn't find somebody to refer out for nutrition that actually understood like an athletic male over the age of 30 or 40. Mm -hmm. Usually they're uh, roped in with like the average as a normal like patient that goes into a general practitioner. Um, and these are very high functioning men who have high level jobs and everything. So they had, to, they had to be treated like high level athletes in a sense. So I was like, all right, let's find out this stuff. And then you realize through studying hormone optimization in men that men's testosterone was on the decline. And I was like, wow, this is really interesting. Like Men are showing up with lower T levels than they did 30 years ago, or than your father, my father, and their grandfathers. Yeah. Um, why is that? And it's obviously a whole host of reasons from environmental to the obesity issues, but a lot of it are very simple solutions that can help maintain something that is at least decent, which is sleeping and exercising and eating, but all of it is the Goldilocks effect, not too little, not too much, just right. Right. And so then, you know, you realize how that affects performance. And I had always had this weird interest in like sex. And I forget who I was telling this the other day. So I went to um, an all girls school for 11 years. And that just does a number on your ability to understand sexuality because nuns tell you basically that if you have sex before any, any age, that the fear of God and everything, like, and I'm not even Catholic. I'm like, what, what are they trying to do? Yeah, my us? alley kind of filled me in on some, cause that's kind of, uh, not 11 years, but a large portion of her childhood was very like that as well. It's kind of mind blowing. Yeah. And, and I, I'm just like, okay. And they showed us like movies of a birth and that's supposed to scare us. And granted it's terrifying. <laughs> You're going to see soon, but it's like, okay. Um, 
I don't know if this is going to keep people away from that, but I would listen to, so there's a radio station in Z100, Z100 in New York City, that in seventh grade, they had this show on at like 10 p.m. called Love Phones with Dr. Judy. And she was like a, I re- a I younger remember, Dr. Ruth. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big Everyone deal. remembers it. Yeah. Yes. And I'm, I'm like listening to them. I'm like, oh my God, she put fruit up there. Oh my God. <laughs> He, like, and I thought it was the most fascinating thing. And of course it's like with, you know, my Sony Walkman with headphones that were like over with yeah. the foam and stuff like listening as like a little kid and they don't teach any of this in Catholic school. So I'm just like, wow, this is really fascinating stuff. And I would go to school and tell my friends about it. And they'd be like, yeah, I listen too. <laughs> we're all freaks. <laughs> just this underground, and then for some this reason, Catholic, the Catholic yes. underground thing. Yeah. And I was like, mom, why'd you send me there? And she's like, well, I wanted you to understand like what religion was. And I'm like, but we don't go to church. We're not Catholic. And she's like, well, you know, it, it helps direct you in like, okay. Did the opposite, right? I wanted you to be a good girl, Allie. That's what I thought if I sent like, you to Catholic school. I, I thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, damn. I don't know. And then, you know, you get to college and like for exercise phys lab, our professor was like, all right, everyone take off your shirt. We're going to do body comp testing. And I'm like, what? There's men in, in my class with no shirts on? It's cool. So anyway, I know that's like a long tangent as to how I got into this, but I always had you have, I always understood that stuff and like biology and everything, the reproductive system. So yeah. good at that photosynthesis. No idea, but yeah. dicks. Yes. Understood. It just came natural. <laughs> right. For, yeah. So Charlie, I'm like, all right, follow Charlie your loves, natural. Loves the, yeah. I'm sure he loves to hear this. <laughs> So was there a was there a client or somebody that made you like say hey we need to look into this or did it just were you always kind of tuned into hey first question is your dick working well because if because that, that my doctor my asked intro. me that my he straight like up it, the first time like I saw that. my test doctor he was like does your dick work well and I was like <laughs> what and he's like that's the best <laughs> sign of what your hormones are are like like where you're at in your life and your health and he's like if you wake up with an erection every morning then we're off to a good start if not then we need to start diving in literally <laughs> so was there was there did you already kind of know that kind of stuff as a, as you know in 2008 and like when you started to get into the coaching thing or did no, it that happen that developed there wasn't a specific thing that happened but it was more as I learned more about men's health and hormones, how big this was as part of that. And not only was, was it um, related to testosterone levels, but more importantly, as we were talking beforehand, blood flow, you know, the brain wiring, all that stuff, stress, like how much your erection can be affected by things other than a hormone. And so I started talking about this and I had to slowly include the question about morning wood in my evaluation yes, that's what because, it was. That's you know what it was. it's like okay you're a guy who's a golfer you want to hit the ball you know 50 yards and some chicks like so uh how's your boner you know and it doesn't under like they don't get it um it's not how i started things but all the health related questions and i'd be like have you had a hormone panel and you know some people were super open to it and they would just like keep talking. And then other guys, they're like very protective. Well, I have the best urologist in New York city. Okay. Sure. I'm not going to go there. Sure. Whatever. I'm sure he's horrible. Anyway. So that's how the, you know, discussions continued. And then I would explain to them the importance of good blood flow and health. And a lot of it has to do with cholesterol and everything. Cause if they're on statins and certain medications and blah, 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 and blood pressure. So, and then you kind of work the way, the conversation around that. And then they're like, oh, okay. Cause they have no idea that that's an indication. They just think, well, I'm getting older. That's supposed to happen. You know, not realizing there's so many solutions, especially nowadays. It's not just, you know, the drugs, there's all different sorts of peptides and shots and ultrasounds and all that stuff. So we're not in, you know, the 1600s, like in the 1600s, it was a crime to be impotent. Like you would be taken to jail and the process for that, like, they would come over to your house and they would watch you. And, and when you felt that you could achieve Are you being erection, for real right now, I swear to God, I swear to God. <laughs> That's crazy. That I swear it, they did the weirdest stuff for men and impotency, impotency back in the day. 
Like in the 1900s, there's some guy who thought, oh, if I sew on goat testicles into a guy, that's going to cure them of infertility and impotency and all that. Clearly, he was sued for malpractice and stuff. But there's a lot of weird shit. Like they had, um, you know, like uh, not a catheter, but if you've ever had a catheter, you know how that feels. So there's something sim uh, sim similar, can't talk today, that was inserted into the penis for men who had ED issues except it would leave you with like a half stiffy all day. But that was just, you had to accept that that was part of the operation. And then not too long after Viagra was founded. What? Which, do you know the story? Do you know the story behind that? No, let's, let's hear it. What's the story? <laughs> it's a fun story. So like Viagra was in 92 was, was run through trials for blood pressure. And they, it was supposed to send blood flow back to the heart for men who dealt with angina and none of the guys were sending back the so drugs go, when it go got back. recalled angina <laughs> angina not not mangina not vagina pain and, okay <laughs> increased blood flow to the heart is what it was supposed to do got it okay. so it was supposed to be a blood pressure medication it failed to do that it was sending blood elsewhere so on the clinical trials, the guys weren't sending the drugs back when it got recalled. And they're like, yo, what's up? <laughs> and they just found this side effect. Six years later, it got sold as an ED drug. And that's how Viagra, Viagra came to market because it wasn't really supposed to do that. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Oops. They're like, nah, yeah. doc. We're saying we need these drugs back. Nah, I don't think so. <laughs> Surprise. I mean, how, how awesome is that? You. You enter this clinical trial for some drug that's supposed to help your blood pressure, and you're walking around with an erection that you've never seen in your life all day long. Granted, you know, the four hour rule, but like, this is like, when you talk, when you talk about hard on, this is a hard on. Right. <laughs> so, okay, so let's rewind. You said something interesting that I hadn't heard. You, you mentioned cholesterol in conjunction with this. Break that down for me. So the, when men are on statins, what, what is that? Which are chol cholesterol reducing drugs. Okay. That can affect their testosterone because cholesterol is the master hormone, basically. Well, pregnenolone is one of them, but cholesterol is where the manufacturing of hormones starts. So it's like the top of the chart and then it falls into pregnenolone. And there's this flow chart that goes into testosterone and estrogen and all that stuff. So yeah. if you suppress the ability for your body to produce that, then in essence, you can be suppressing testosterone levels. So it can be a little bit dangerous. So statins are, you know, they get a bad rap. They've got their place. You know, that's a medical professional's decision to put somebody on one. But I think they're very much handed out like candy if somebody's cholesterol is like over 200. So if it's 200.5, here you go. Whereas, you know, there's guys who have cholesterol levels well into the 260s, you know, and 280s where that's cardioprotective and, you know, it's not what it once thought, once we thought it was, where everyone was like, I have cholesterol 90, I win. And it's like, no, that's, that's actually too low, dude. Yeah. And so. I, I've kind of personally, and you know, I'm not a doctor, uh, but I don't really. Me neither. Me neither. Yeah. So I'm not, I don't really buy into the whole cholesterol thing, especially because of my because of me being on HRT for so long and everything. And, um, you know, I've been checked multiple times and they're like, and according to a blood, I have, I mean, I don't remember what it is. I could probably pull up, pull mine up, but to a normal person, I would have higher cholesterol, I guess, or what they would, maybe what they would perceive higher 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, but maybe not now, I don't know. But, um, so I'm, I've always been kind of like, Oh, I have high cholesterol. I'm like, but do you, or do you just overeat? <laughs> you know, like, exactly. so, um, cause I know that testosterone can also play in a factor of making your cholesterol higher. Correct. Yes, it can. And it can also lower HDL, but then it also will eat up triglycerides. So it does a lot of good things too. Right. So, so that's, that's why I'm, I'm, I've always been kind of like, like, yeah, cholesterol is yeah. not a, biggest deal as people think it is especially if you're yeah. healthy um but it's it's the the extra four thousand calories that you're putting in your mouth that's the problem not necessarily your cholesterol 
And the body fat and yeah. inflammation and, you know, the pre-diabetes and diabetes, which is like 80% of the country, you know, most likely if you have type two diabetes, you're going to be dealing with some erectile issues. So there, you know, it's similar to what's going on with COVID. Everyone's sending me study left and right. Oh, men are getting treated with uh, estrogen. Men are getting treated with testosterone in Europe. Men are doing that. And I'm like, yo, okay. The underlying common factor here is that they're in really bad health and diabetes and inflammation and, and being just complete train wrecks of any specimen being worthy of being healthy is the problem. Yeah, their hormones are going to be affected, but you can't say this publicly. You have to, you know, okay, sure. Thank you. Appreciate I'm so, it. I'm so glad you just said it publicly because I feel like, you know, with all this stuff going and I'm kind of a big, you know, you've probably seen some of my posts that I've I've been kind of banging the drum against the government and uh, yes. their nonsense with COVID. But um, I feel like this is nothing more than a fucking wake up call to the unhealthy. Big time. Like, and, yeah. Is there, is there, a, you know, and, and Dr. Kirk Parsley talked about it. Is there a one-off where, you know, you hear these one stories where like the one healthy guy that's super healthy got, got it and then, you know, bad shit happened to him. Sure, that and then and they blow that story completely out and they make that the norm when it's just simply not the norm at all whatsoever. Yeah. Um, you know, any virus, any virus whatsoever is going to be more successful to the, if you are unhealthy with a lower immune system and overweight and don't aren't taking care of yourself. Those of us that are super healthy and we like we hold live this whole lifestyle, just don't get sick as much. And I was talking to Josh and I was like, dude, when's the last time you've like had a cold or like yeah. gotten the flu or gotten anything? He's like, dude, it, I can't even remember. He's like the other day, the other time he, his whole house got sick and he mm. was fine. All the yeah. girls, everybody got sick. And he's like, he's like, dude, if I, when I'm on my, you know, my meds and I'm, I'm staying healthy and I'm training, I'm eating right. He's like, I just don't get sick. My immune system is like must be like kicking mm -hmm. and I, yeah you know, i don't know there, there's a lot no it, it, there's a lot of truth to that and keeping healthy people locked up like this it, it's similar to like the overly germaphobic parents who don't allow their kid to touch anything or eat anything and then all of a sudden he gets sick all the time and then, so and then, then when he's as an adult cool. he's like got a autoimmune disease or some something crazy yeah, yeah. but th this actually has been a wake-up call to some of my clients who have been like i would say half-ass compliant and then they're like wow like i i can't leave my house because i'm too scared or you know some of them who just didn't take care of these things it's like now you can focus on the sleep now you can focus on this stuff and i don't want to say there's positives to covid but one of the massive positives for me is that I don't trust a lot of medical doctors, but the ones I do are not necessarily local to me or to a lot of my clients. But right. now the laws have been uh, relaxed a little bit for telemedicine where you can get a prescription over telemedicine, where before you'd have to fly to see the person in person at least one time, and then they can take care of you. Yeah. So now I'm able to collaborate with the guys that I trust, and then we can develop even you know, higher level, more concierge style plans for people to really get dialed in with somebody who's competent with hormone optimization. And it's not like a GP who's like, oh yeah, go on 200 milligrams of test sip every 12 days. And I'm like, mm. you just made so, the problem worse. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. It's like, all right, well, at least we got tests, but now it's like, all right, cool. Now I know this person knows exactly what this person will need. And if there's anything lifestyle related, this person also lifts and eats correctly. So then they can, you know, refer to me if they need help in that department to help the patient. Yeah. So, so, so let's break it down. Say you've got a 25 year old client. Let's just break it down by deck, by, by decade. And I know there's a, so much that goes into it, but we, you know, we got the time. I want to let people talk about it. If you're 25 and you are having any sort of ed performance issue now according to according to the last podcast that is literally uh ejaculate too early don't ejaculate at all um not as hard 
as you once were, um, any sort of performance, anything that you don't deem okay. Is there anything you want to add to that? Any issues there? A lot of it is, you know, like, like the food quality diet lifestyle, but also porn, excessive watching of porn. Um, masturbation's normal masturbation. I think guys should do that. They should clean the pipes and exercise the penis every day. But if it starts affecting like your daily social relationships or personal where you're like, Oh my God, I can't wait to go upstairs and go in the closet. Like, obviously it's a problem. Yeah. Um, but it, you know, I think porn in general affects the younger generation because especially now if they have nothing to do, but watch porn, oh, geez. if they've never actually had a relationship or if they're new to dating, they're going to expect sex to be just like that. And this could go a few different ways. One of them being like, like now we're getting to a parent, I, a parenting talk. <laughs> yeah. Sit down, but, but one of them, like, let me tell you about the birds and the bees. You really don't need to be 13 inches. So <laughs> these kids become insecure because they're like, I have to be absolutely jacked. I have to have no hair in my body. I have to have this massive dick. And then they get insecure and they're just like, it's the male form of body, you know, dysmorphia. Right. And then they think, oh, well, if I just penetrate the female, she'll just orgasm and that's all there is to it. Obviously we know that it's a little bit more complicated than that. So that's where some of the issues can start to come to fruition. But, you know, the excessive porn and the excessive climax is like, the dopamine hits from that, well, dopamine's great. We all love dopamine, but too much of, of something that's good is going to suppress other stuff. So, okay. you know, with the, with the younger kids, having low testosterone, having erectile issues is actually way more common than it used to be, where we used to reference like, hey, you want the testosterone you had when you were 23? Well, now that could be like 200. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Okay, so you got a 25-year-old yeah. that's having these issues. What, what are you going to tell him? I would start with like, what are you eating? How are you exercising? What is your sleep and what is your stress? Because there are a lot of men, but they don't talk about it as often as women who under eat and train more. And that alone, your body's going to say, all right, cool. I'm not getting enough fuel to perform these ex excess activities. So I'm going to kind of get rid of things that are not necessary. One of them being a rock hard boner. Body doesn't seem that that's necessary. Procreation is not going to happen with somebody who can't even fuel the necessary processes in their body alone. Okay, so let's living, let's talk so. about the nutrition side then. What sh if we want to have if we want to have rock hard boners? What should we be eating? <laughs> well, there are actually foods that contribute to that, and I have a funny story about it. So one of them is arugula, which is a type of lettuce, which produces nitrous oxide. So NO production is a big factor in um, erections because it promotes blood flow. Like it's, you know, in a lot of pre-workouts and stuff like that. And, it, and any NO uh, promoter is a good thing. So it's found in the soil and plants and stuff. Um, and it's found in beets, but arugula is one of the things that I mention all the time. We call it like the PP greens or, you know, the boner greens. When I spoke in England about it, they're like, no, that's called rocket. And I was like, it's called rocket. You call it rocket. That's like perfect. And they're <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, oh my God. And I actually did an Instagram post on it. And I showed literally, it was, it was like a stock photo of a guy in his boxers. And you happen to see that there was something protruding from the boxers. But it was like, so you couldn't even tell as a dick. You might as well had like a little ice cream cone or something. And Instagram pulled it. And I'm like, you, you mean to tell me like these birth canals that these women show are okay. But anyway, that's a tangent for another day. So arugula. <laughs> okay. One of the best things that you can have. Hey, um, babe, you need to buy some arugula. <laughs> yes, yes. And then tag me on Instagram and just keep eating it. <laughs> So that, but it helps, you know, promote good blood flow. Cause if you don't have good blood flow or good endothelial health, right. then you're not going to have the best chance at getting a full erection or, you know, up to the hardness that most guys are used to. Okay. So, and, and that's a factor that a lot of guys don't think about is they're like, oh yeah, if I'm stressed, but testosterone, but actually, you know, if your blood flow is bad, then that's something that. So what, what other kind of foods? Um, Dark leafy greens, not just arugula if you don't like arugula, but beet juice tends to be a popular one. Like they'll put beets in, in some of the uh, 
pre-workouts, but the supplement L-citrulline and arginine, citrulline actually makes arginine. Those are big ones as well. And that's really all you need. So, okay. you know, and just making sure that you're exercising and you're getting the blood pumping. So this, so I'm hearing a lot of plants. Does that mean, or, or, I'm not saying that you're saying that. Does that mean red meat can pull that away? Is going to pull blood flow away? No, not at all. Okay. No, that that's, no. You, you want to eat like a vegetarian with meat as a garnish. Ah. So, so that's kind of what I tell it. people. You're kind of flipping it. Yeah. I, I am not married to a certain diet style. I've tried them all just to understand what people are trying to understand. Okay. It, it's so like, literally, I could get somebody to change their religion quicker than their, um, you know, opinion on a certain diet. I don't care how somebody wants to eat. But if they come to me for help, obviously what they're doing is not working. Yeah. So. P like, I've right. learned, I've learned in the recent months, people are super, super emotionally attached to their food. Oh my gosh. Like, yeah. like, like, and not just to their food, but to their diets. Super scary. I was listening to a podcast on, on erectile health. The host, I don't know who she was, asked the guy about game changers. And she's like, there's this study. Have, have you seen? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they did like plant based and then meat and then who had the better erection. And I'm like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And so many people were asking me about it. And I was like, do you understand how many variables go into somebody having erection? Like that, men nocturnally will have like three to five throughout the night anyway, but like really? So oh you don't, God. you don't give any uh, validity to that, that short part in that movie. No, no, <laughs> I no. liked, I did see, uh, I don't know if you remember Adam Slank, but he sent me, I think he sent me something or I said something to him and he mentioned it. There was somebody on the gram somewhere was talking about, talking about this and he was talking about erections and, and the, the whole thing of like, if you're, his whole point was, and he's, he kind of in agreement with you. He didn't say that red meat will not cause it or plants do cause it he's like but it's talk it talks about blood flow and and no2 and he's like if you really want to go on a date and you're gonna have and you know that you're gonna close the deal at the end of the night because you know you've been working on this for a while or even arbitrage with your wife you know and you've got a date night and the kids are away and everything's set up for success for you to go home and make a bunch of fucking noise because the house is empty and you guys can run around with your <laughs> with your Furby suits on or whatever, whatever you're into. He, he was basically saying that you would not go out and have like a big steak dinner with a baked potato. He was, he's because because then all the blood flow from your body is going to your gut to, to process that. He's like, what you would do. And he actually, it's funny. You said beets. He's like, I would have personally, I'd have like a beet salad with a glass of red wine, you know, and something <laughs> light and something that's going to put oxygen into my blood and then a little bit of red wine because that's I, I forgot what he said but it does something i know that for photo shoots you can have a, a small glass of red wine before you do a photo shoot and get all vascular and so there's something in there with red wine um but are would well, you alcohol yeah that? alcohol in general yeah you know i wouldn't disagree and, and i totally understand the point he's making i think the the danger in other people's interpretation is oh my god red meat is bad you know Right. And so they all take that way farther and be like, oh, red meat's bad for your erection. No, that's not what he said. Right. You know, at or you can moment. pop a Cialis <laughs> yeah. at that moment. But like, like Vi Viagra, you can't have with food. You have to have it like two hours outside of food. But Cialis, you can take with food. So you can also pop that if you, if you are having steak and like she pressures you into like, you know, going to Capitol Grill or something. And you're not a man if you're getting like a salad at capital grill or something like that so yeah but i think there's that you know some validity to anything like that that's good good information for everybody out there listening um so on so like so core so the ceo sent me these little gummies and uh i have to i'll i'll put them in the link below but so he's like hey we have this new medication medication i want you to try out and i started laughing i was like i think I think Allie was in my alley was in first trimester or something like that. And I got this medication from them. I'm like, Hey, you want me to try this? And she's like, Whoa, because we're talking about like, a, you know, like you take this medication, you, you, it, should, 
if you're with a significant other, it, it should be a planned event because that means it's a date night situation. Like you're going to throw down. You two are going to have a lot of fun. It's not going to be a 15 minute thing. Um, so he kept calling me and we're, you know, we did IVF. So like the whole first trimester, I'm like, I think she was fine. I was literally beside myself. Like, don't move. <laughs> don't walk. Don't, don't breathe. Don't walk. <laughs> don't breathe hard. Don't, don't like, she's wanting to work out and all this stuff. And I'm like, why don't we just sit down? Let me get you some ice cream or something. Just, <laughs> just go on bed rest. <laughs> yeah, just go on bed rest. And, you know, if you know anybody that knows Miss Capra, that's not the way she yeah. rolls. Anyways, but I was like, yeah, we're just gonna, we're just gonna take the take time. But uh, it, when we did take it, it was fun. But all right, when I took it, it was fun. What was in uh, it? honestly i don't remember and 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 sydney's gonna be so pissed at me for not knowing but it's their like signature it's actually a gummy it's a watermelon gummy um and it's the one of the ones that they that they prescribe and, and they make it you know so it's in-house but um i will say personally i have had i had um a lot of good results on it and it is very fun and yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. take it whatever it is just take he, he it. said he and, and the same thing he they you know every time you start with a new doctor they always ask how does your dick work you know yep. and because that's a again that goes back to it's a surefire sign of how things are working you know if you wake up with an erection do you wake up in the night with an erection like they ask all this stuff so if anybody that's either on hrt or going to go on hrt this is a question that a doctor should ask you and if they're not asking you then find a new doctor um that's that's just Nick's personal opinion. Um, so he asked me, he's like, hey, you know, the simple down the line, he's like, depression, sleep, workouts, recovery, body fat, you know, and then penis. And uh, they always ask that. And I said, no, I'm, I'm good. Um, and those of you that missed the other podcast, it's actually in my book as well. When I before I got on testosterone, and you might have heard me talk about this as well. I, I didn't have an issue with getting an erection. I, it was the give a shit meter for sex was not there. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I just didn't, yep. I just didn't care. And then Allie and I actually struggled with that when I came off because I kind of did it the old school way of what I thought I needed to do it. I completely went cold Turkey came off for eight. It ended up being, it was supposed to be four months, but it ended up being like close to eight months by the time we had the surgery. Mm -hmm. So the whole time that I was off, I just, she was like, I don't even think you love me. I was like, I definitely love you. She's like, well, we, I'm like, I don't, I, it's just not on my mind. I didn't care. So that was where I struggled with, with it. Um, so then anyways, when I got hooked up with Cormed, he's like, how's it working? I was like, no, it's fine. Everything's good. As long as I, you know, stay on saying everything. And then he goes, well, I'm going to send you some stuff. Just take it on a date night. It's for a good time. You know? <laughs> So, so we did. No, I think so. it's great that you shared that because I know there's guys listening who deal with that. They just don't know if that's normal, you know, it's not. And, and the more guy, well, they, but they, it's more common than they realize, you they, know, they you, shared you could have libido, you could yeah, have libido with no, it's like 60% of men deal with it on some level. Like mm -hmm. that's, that's crazy. And I actually stopped uh, drinking out of plastic bottles because of you Cause and of eating out of plastic because <laughs> that can that the uh, the morning wood talk that you did at the Raider Project seminar yep. with hormones and everything and all those memes and you were talking about plastics and everything like and we can't control everything right yeah but we can control what we can control so for me I was like yeah I'm done that's that's done I'm going <laughs> aluminum and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not removing anything that is going to negatively affect me. Yeah, there's a lot of rabbit holes you can go down and it gets kind of crazy, but it's like, all right, if you can knock out like a couple things in your daily life that will just kind of collectively contribute to, you know, performing more like a optimal man, hey, why not? So, so back to your clients, you got a guy, um, what are you, what are you, what are you going to start doing with them? You you obviously address nutrition, which we just we talked we discussed. What else? For okay, uh, anybody in general. So, um, what 
when they when they sign on, like if they have any lab work or anything that they would like a medical opinion to take, then I will provide that for them with a medical practitioner because mm -hmm. uh, I'm not a doctor. So everything. But you actually have one that you work with, right? Yes. So, yeah. um, you know, it and there's like it's a normally what guys get are so basic that it's like, all right, they didn't do hormones because they'll either say, yeah, I have labs and it's like the regular stuff. Or it's, yeah, I got testosterone and he said I'm in range and it's just total T or it's total and free and there's like nothing else. Okay, cool. But let's start somewhere. I'm not going to push them into going to get labs and talk to somebody else. You know, what are the biggest issues they're dealing with? And then upon a console, they have done a three-day food log that I've already looked at. Um, and then depending on what their goals are, if it's just nutrition or nutrition and training, then we kind of set a plan going forward as to what we're going to do, how many days a week they're going to train, what's realistic for them. And I always ask people, like, what do you like to eat? How many times a day do you like to eat? What do you want to look like? Especially with men, because I'll have men come to me and say, I want to be shredded. I'm like, okay, what does that mean to you? Yeah. You know, because when I say it, like, I want to look like Dana Lynn Bailey, that to me, that's shredded. That would scare the shit out of any woman who ever came to me. Right. So for the guys, it's like, and I have a plethora of photos of, you know, like Braun Strowman, the wrestler, and then Ryan Reynolds, and then like Jason, Bitt, like people who have like a two pack and like some, you know, muscle showing, but they don't have to be like dick skin lean with veins on the abs. But you have to understand that because like the commitment level is way different for either of those. And mostly guys just want to feel good, look good naked in their mind and feel like they have like some muscle. Great. Let me understand that better. Send me a photo of somebody that you aspire to look like body type wise. Cause you get surprised sometimes that you never realized this person would want to look like this. That's cool. Definitely achievable. And so then it's, this is the plan that will get us to go to that and, you know, monitoring everything along the way, but let's knock out the biggest rocks. If somebody's not sleeping and, or they have high blood pressure and they're like, I want to do CrossFit style workouts five days a week. I have to tell them, I'm sorry, that's not going to happen because it's going to be a vicious cycle of not recovering right. and not being able to, you know, build the tissue that you want to build. So that is so, so something that I've struggled with personally is I've always, and it's probably because of my military background and special operations, but oh, I, yeah. as much as I bang the drum on recovery and be like, Hey, maybe you shouldn't train today. You should just go on a walk, you know, because your stress is <laughs> so yep. high. For me, I, I, I'm like the biggest hypocrite because I will, I will push through that shit mentally. And, and, then, and then like a week goes by and I'm like feeling like complete dog shit. I'm like, okay, finally I cave. I'm like, I'm going to take the day off. I'm going to go sleep. I'm going to take a nap. I'm going to go for a walk with Allie. And, you know, but it's so hard mentally because I'm like, no, fuck that. I'm going to go, I'm going to go and I'm going to go harder and I'm going to go again. I'm going to push <laughs> through this and my body will just have to pick it up. But your body doesn't give a shit what your mind can do. You know? No, no. And it, it doesn't care about our vanity concerns no. or anything. Just wants us to stay alive. So, so that I can appreciate. So your, your guys that, so this is another thing, the guys that really want to get, like super super lean they want to get shredded have you ever have you seen any correlation with super low body fat and ed if i haven't had any but i've had one guy do a show in the past year he's 57 um but he he admits he's like it, it goes up when it wants to go up and he's on testosterone <laughs> he, he's He's, he's hilarious. Like he, he's his own entity basically. So Is this your star, um, your star guy that, uh, your yeah, star client yeah. that you've talked about over the years. Yeah. This yes, guy, this guy's he, famous and he doesn't even know it. I don't know. Maybe he does know it. <laughs> he does. And he does it. Like he's the only one surprisingly, cause he's not on social media. He doesn't even text message, but then he's like, put me on, on, on the thing with your fans. And so I'm like, they're actually your fans and they want more of you. And now with the lockdown, I'm training him at his house which is a replica of a French palace. So everyone's like, what does he do? I'm like, I don't even know. I don't think he does anything. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, but he'll say, I'm like, give me a lowdown what you do. And I'll get emails at like 9 p.m., which is the witching hour for him. And he's like, I am currently living on cigarettes, Alka-Seltzer, booze, and 
that's about it. And I'm like, okay, cool. That's no different than any other night. So uh, he would he would be somebody we call an outlier. And you know, other than that, I've had nobody go go to the stage. So there, but there is a correlation. Like if you talk to any man who's a natural competitor who's on stage, if they had a hormone panel done and their doctor saw it, their doctor would be like, dude, you're gonna die. And yeah. likely they would have some erectile issues just because maintaining that type of body fat percentage, especially low single digit is so hard and it's just not sustainable that it goes back to the whole, um, you know, behavioral or behavioral uh, evolutionary thing where your body's trying to make you stay alive and then it'll get rid of what's not necessary. So it's really also in that, those state, those levels of leanness that testosterone really starts to become a problem. Um, it's not so much like when a guy loses a lot of weight and he's still, you know, around 12 to 15% body fat, it's more of like the thyroid adaptations and all those things. But when he's like single digits, then you'll see test, test levels kind of plummet because so we're talking so less. So we're saying nine below that you, you would start seeing. Yeah. Have use. Okay. Yeah. So where's the, in your opinion, where's the healthy anabolic range like that, I, that I am lean. I'm super anabolic because my body's burning fat. My testosterone is up naturally. Like where, where would, where would a healthy man, the late twenties to fifties or, you know, early fifties should be. Yeah. I would say in the lower teens would be probably the healthiest, more, um, admiral, admirable is not the right word, but I think that's where they would want to land aesthetics wise. Yeah. Um, because it, it is so different for everybody. Like there, I've seen guys at 20% body fat who have six packs that are turning into eight packs and then guys at like 17% that have like two packs. So it is, you know, a little bit well, different course, depending it, on body type. Right. Body type. And then yeah. what, what muscle you've developed where, and you know, yeah, I get that. Yeah. So, so but I, I would say, you know, it, it, if somebody is dealing with lower t, t levels and erectile issues and they have a lot of body fat to lose, that's the first place to start. Okay. So I love this conversation because people don't realize what it takes. Like you've got, say you're 30%, say you're 25 to 30% body fat. Um, what are you going to do to get them to actually lose weight? Like what, and I talk about it all the time, but I want you to, I want you to, I want to hear it from you. Like what I'm say I'm 40 years old, I'm 27% body fat and I want to be sub 15% body fat. What do I do? I'd say that's a very, very good goal. <laughs> um, it's not going to happen tomorrow. I'm very upfront with the guys that think it could happen rapidly because that's another thing is you'll get people that have dropped a lot of weight quickly and then it has that obvious rebound and then they're trying to do the same thing that worked before it doesn't work Yeah. and then they get frustrated. So um, with that, it, it's providing them an understanding that what they're doing now is not working for them or serving them. And then it's finding out it's a lot of psychology why are they there and, and the reasons they're giving you as to why they're there, what is really behind that? So if they want to get to sub 15, why? And then they'll give you three. Because I want okay, to be okay, but why? super anabolic. I want to be healthy. I want my penis to work and I want to look good naked. So, I mean, I want to be like, all right, let's go on testosterone. Let's go on. I won't say it, but I think testosterone is a great starting point. Um, Granted, there's, there's a lot of lifestyle stuff that somebody has to take care of. So I want this person to be able to go on TRT, but I also want them to understand that it's not a magic pill and it's going to help all that stuff. But if you can't show me, you can't take care of your lifestyle stuff first. It's like almost earning the right to go on that. And, yeah. and one of my clients actually said that he was like, you know, resisted it for a year that we were working together, dropped a great amount of body fat by himself to a point where he felt, okay, there's only so much you know, that he can do besides looking into going on testosterone. And I think every man ultimately should end up on it because of the onslaught of, you know, environmental issues and everything that right. is starting in that decline. Yeah. 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 So, so what would you do for, what would you do for me if I'm sitting in that, that worm for diet? Like what would, am I doing macros? Am I doing calories? Or am I just winging it? Like how, how do you attack the nutrition side of that? So the app that I use is called Chronometer, which allows me to 
see everybody's food journals on one platform. So say you tracked food, you know, for a few weeks and we're doing a consult and I'll be like, all right, Nick, you're eating, you know, X amount of calories and it's wildly inconsistent. And normally the protein level is going to be very low. So it's usually kind of shifting things around. Jack up the protein. If you just jack up the protein, you're going to see results in somebody who's that overweight. Like that alone will do a lot. So that's the first thing I do is, all right, calorie deficit, really high protein, and then carbs and fats, it really doesn't matter. What do you like to eat, Nick? Oh, I love fat. Great. We'll make that fit versus like you have to eat every three hours, which I'm sure I did. I don't know if you did. Told people like back in the day that, that mean, you had to do that. And it had to be six meals. There, there was a time that there was a time that I, yeah, that I've said that and done it myself. I just lost you. I'm still here. That's so weird. I can't see you. Hold on. (laughs) Sorry, you're gonna have to edit that part. Is this a video podcast? Both. Okay. Can you see me now? No, I don't know why. Is it? It's on your end. Phone ring. Oh, here we go. Yes. We're good. We're good. Okay. Okay. So Where was I? real quick, you talked about, and this is what people don't really understand. And I'm so glad you talked about the protein because all the client, all the clients that we have, and right now I have, I have 128 that we're managing right now. And wow. all of our, all of our like ones that have been on with us for like a year or longer, they just super get it. It's like, it's, it's amazing to watch them over a period of few months, like learn this. And then they become I'm like, I don't even know why you're working with me. Like uh, maybe you just like working with me and Josh, but uh, they're like, you've learned so much. And one of the guys yeah. is, was like, I think he was over 300. Now he's like 195. And we've gone from, from really dropping his body fat, like a weight loss program to a hypertrophy program now. So he's just, he's a stud. That's but awesome. it is interesting. You said the, the protein thing, because like when I put people on it and I do the food log too, I'm like, Hey, I just want, eat, don't change anything. I just want to see what you've been doing. Carbs, 300 grams of carbs, 60 grams of protein. Yes. What the fuck are you doing? Oh my God. And somewhere, someone wrote a rule for like women, it was 1200 calories and for men, it was like 1500. Yeah, I I don't, anyway, so, so like getting them to, so, so I'm, it's awesome that you said like jack that protein up. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to need you to like double, triple that protein numbers. And let's, let's take those carbs down a lot. And then let's, let's balance this thing out a little bit which immediately starts to help. And once they get, they start to help. But you mentioned deficit. You know, this is something I bang the drum on. So, so let's just paint a picture for me. Um, six foot, 40 years old. Um, and I weigh, let's say 240. Okay. And I want to be 15% body fat. My BMR is 2200. Um, what are you going to, what are you going to do for me? Like what, what's a deficit? Like, should I eat 2200 and train? Should I be below that? Like, what do you, what do you do? I mean, obviously I knew you have to like watch me and see me and you know, like I know there's a time, but I don't think people understand deficit. That's the reason why I'm bringing the question up. No, no, you're right. Cause I think way too many people will start at their BMR and then like subtract from their BMR. And then they find, find themselves not in a deficit, but like in a scarcity. Yeah. And it is no good. But I will preface that with people who are afraid of protein that I eat like 200 grams a day. It's no problem. And I love it because people freak out. So it's okay. There's no issues. It, it, it's like creatine. Like all of a sudden it's this evil thing. So anyway, um, so with somebody like that, so if your BMR is like two, like 2200, you have to find out what somebody's total, you know, the total daily energy expenditure, which are a right. lot of different, different things. And that would be what encompasses the entire metabolism. So when people say I have a slow metabolism or I have a fast metabolism, like what are they trying to say? They're probably just either eating too much or they're not eating enough. And more often than not, people are not eating enough for the a- actual level of output that they're doing, but they don't take right. that into consideration. So as we know, BMR makes up about 60% of our metabolism. So just sitting here, what we're burning, doing nothing. And then we have the um, thermic effect of feeding, which is eating and the energy it takes our body to break that down. Protein requires the most energy for your body to do that. So that's another reason 
to hop on the high protein train. Um, Non-exercise activity thermogenesis or NEAT, which a lot of people have heard that term, is anything that is not structured exercise. So like laundry, chores, you know, all things that have pretty much come to a screeching halt for a lot of people during lockdown. Yeah, moving around that, your chores. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That will move the needle so much in somebody's fat loss efforts versus slashing calories and increasing exercise. And then lastly, we have exercise activity thermogenesis, which is about 5% of our metabolism. So theoretically, you can lose weight and not exercise a day. Awesome. Are you going to have the composition that you want with the body fat percentage? Yeah. Probably not so much, but you will lose weight. So when it comes to a deficit, people say, oh, okay, calculate my BMR 2200. And then I hear 500 calories a day. So I'll lose a pound of fat. So then now you're below what your body needs to function throughout the day. Now, this will work until it doesn't. Right. And that's where the hunger shoots up. That's where the cravings shoot up. That's where the energy goes through the floor and you just feel like complete crap. Right. And those are all biofeedback markers that I ask people every single week on their check-in. Like, how's your hunger, your energy, your cravings, your libido? So those are all signs that if something's off, you know, we got to tweak stuff. So I usually will start people at like a two to 300 calorie reduction off of their uh, predicted total daily energy expenditure. So like your TDE. I start slow. Yeah. Not, yeah. Not the BMR. Got it. Right. And if you're somebody who, you know, say even right now, you're working out four days a week for two hours and you're walking at least an hour a day yeah. versus somebody who could be the same height and weight who is working out twice a week and sitting for 12 hours a day. Right. Like, you know, it doesn't add up. So you have to really take into account what is somebody doing every single day and not enough people understand the activity that you're doing like that counts or they'll take it the other way and they'll be like, Oh, all this activity, I get to add these calories back in. Um, no. <laughs> oh, I hate that. So we, we, we're a big component of my fitness pal and we have it. We have MF, we have my fitness pal tied into our coaching app and everything. Oh, okay, so many yeah. people will turn on the, I have to tell them like, do not turn on your exercise calories. That's because they're like, you, you, you walk three miles, you get an extra 600 calories. I'm like, no, you don't. You work, you walk three miles so that you can burn the food that you ate <laughs> not to replace yes. it. Yeah. Like I wish it worked that way. Um, yeah. Granted, the more output you have, the more food you should be eating, yeah. but it usually goes the other way. As you know, right. people think like, oh, I'm going to go on a diet, so I'll exercise two hours and eat negative a thousand, <laughs> and then it's like the shit hits the fan within a week. And then all of a sudden, they have all this water retention. They feel like, crap, I'm not losing weight. Well, yeah, no shit, because you're gaining water. <laughs> if it worked that way, I would be, I'd be eating pizza every single day. Right? Seriously. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Dream. So, um, have you noticed, so with, so with all of this, um, have you noticed, and this is something I've noticed as I age, which is super sad. And Stu Smith actually talked about it at the last TSAC conference, um, with, we, let's just call it BMR or TDE in age. Like when I was in my early twenties, I wish I, I wish I knew what my levels, my, my, my TDE was and my BMR was back then compared to what it is, what it is now. So yeah. if, if, or do you, is it a drastic change between say a 25 year old athlete that you have and a 55 year or 45 year old athlete do you have? Uh, yes and no. Like I think it, it depends on how much muscle tissue somebody has built in their younger years how athletic they were and how much they, they moved around. Okay. So, cause you have guys like, especially golfers who weren't necessarily athletes first. They were, they were just people or academics who want to become athletes through golf. And it's like reteaching somebody how to walk almost just from like think cynic or whatever. God, I can't talk today, man. Um, getting somebody to jump explosively is like, right a very, very much a task, especially now when it's through zoom, like I, it's hard to really teach somebody how to jump like that. Um, so when you're dealing with people who have built as much muscle as possible 
when they were young and continue to weight train, they inherently are more insulin sensitive. So they can tolerate more carbohydrates. And this goes for women because they want to be as muscular as they can. And when I say muscular, I'm like, just, just lift the damn weight all the way until you know your elderly ages because you will be that much less prone to bone density issues when right. estrogen starts to go low and you can tolerate more carbohydrates. Now, metabolism does slow because of age and that's something that's valid, yes, but you know, hormone optimization is a beautiful thing. He said basically it was and it was just brilliant to hear it. like basically as you age you just out can't train you can't out train your calories or something along those lines. No. And I've, I've noticed it myself is like, I can't, if I eat, it doesn't matter how much I train one, I, I don't recover like I used to, even with on all the stuff. And I, and I'm, you know, as far as like the average male, the 38 year old male, like I'm way above all of that. I'm damn near at this point, damn near professional athlete at my age group, you know, even though I still oh, yeah. mentally compare myself to a very younger, more <laughs> uh, more anabolic version of myself. I'm like, well, I'm not that great. And then I have to look around at my age group where I at. I'm like, actually, pretty fucking soft right now. But I've noticed <laughs> that, you know, back then I could eat 3500 calories. A matter, matter of fact, I needed that to perform. And I, if I eat 3500 calories now, I would look like what's his name from dodgeball, you know, sitting on the couch eating pizza. <laughs> like, I just can't, I can't do that. And so I don't know if you've seen the, the same thing or, or if there's a, like, what the, what's the balance there and how, you know, how does that work for, for your, for your athletes? I actually have one guy, he, he's not an athlete, but he trains pretty hard. Um, and he's a big dude. Like he's like six foot five, I think. And I use him as an example quite often because he came to me having done keto, which I know you've tried for three years strict and he felt great for a while. And then all of a sudden he started feeling like more inflamed and weak and just body comp wasn't going in the direction he wanted. So when he came to me, it wasn't like I could go from zero to a hundred with carbs. It was a slow introduction, but he is so metabolically flexible that literally he could, the amount of carbs he eats now, he still produces ketones because of the way he trains. Mm -hmm. So I had him, I think he finally stopped losing weight at 600 grams of carbs. And he would like send me pictures of his rice cake stacked up and shit. And I was like, God damn it. And I think we had him at his last refeed was like 800 grams of carbs over the course of three days. And so a low day now is when he's between four and 500 and he'll still, he'll send me his glucose. He'll send me his ketone numbers. Like he's very diligent. He's very consistent. And he's, practiced, um, I wouldn't call it fasting, but I would call it time restricted feeding as well as tried fasting protocols, which helps yeah. you make your body, you know, you can switch from fats to carbs, fats to carbs. Yeah. Now, had he not tried all this when he was, you know, younger, I don't know if it would be the same or better, or he'd be eating 6,000 grams of carbs or how what? Old is he? He's uh 36 now. 36. Okay. So he's, so I, I consider that young still cause I'm 38. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. Everyone's young. <laughs> so yeah, totally young. Um, but you know, it, it, I think people like the knowledge that we develop, it's like, oh, we could eat better. Like we, we probably didn't eat enough protein when we were younger. We probably didn't eat enough I know I didn't. carbs yeah. or yeah. Or yeah. train the right way. Right. You know? So now it's a, more of like a strategic approach not necessarily like through nutrient timing, but like, oh, okay, this is your output. This is your aerobic fitness. You know, now we have HRV to look at, sleep to look at. We know the parameters of all these things now and why somebody feels the way they do to be able to apply the correct uh, nutritional approach and strategies for that, as well as recovery. Because that's probably the biggest factor in people older like us is recovery. I'm the same. I can't recover the way I used to. And it really pisses me off. Because you know? mentally, you've you've oh, built wow. up a couple decades of training to where you know you can go, you can force it, but it's only gonna it's gonna fuck you in the end, really. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like this. This is so like I want to go back to playing soccer again, but I, I mean, I could run maybe for five minutes straight, and I have to stop. Like what the hell. Yeah, I, I was talking. <laughs> I with, like sprinting. I just don't want to do that distance stuff. I was talking with that with a couple other podcasts as well, saying like, you know, like. I want to mentally, I want to push through, but then I look at my HRV 
which I've been, it's, it's amazing. And anybody that's listening, like you really should get into monitoring HRV either through whoop or mega wave. I'm actually going to order a mega wave and try that one out as well. Um, because Charlie's favorite. is that your favorite? Charlie uses that with team Canada. Loves really? It. Yeah, yeah. So I I'm interested in that as well. And, um, there's been so many correlations between like some success that I've had with just paying attention to that and seeing what my like actual biofeedback my body's given me and then listening to it and then saying, Hey, I'm, you're recovered. So that means go fucking hard, you know, yeah. or when you're in, you know, when you're in the red and you're like, Hey, you should probably take a nap. Don't go hard, take a nap or just take a walk, yeah. you know, go walk your wife. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's I important. It. I use Aura Ring too, which which is great for sleep tracking. So, which one? And I can see Aura Ring. It's like a titanium ring. Really? It has um. Oh, dude, you love it. It's only three hundred only, but it's three hundred dollars. But uh, it does HRV throughout the night, body temp, steps, sleep, and it, it's like it'll yell at you. It'll be like like time to stretch your legs if you've been sitting too long, or in the morning it'll say concentrate on recovery, take it easy. And it'll show, you know, your resting heart rate and everything. And I have a few, a few clients with it who will send me their data and I'll just say, all right, you know what? I think you need to take like a day off. I actually had a guy last week, very stressful week. He had gained like two pounds, which people, you know, tend to stress over, but his HRV was through the roof and he wasn't sleeping well. I said, do me a favor, take the next three days off, keep food the same, just walk. And he dropped like three pounds within the three days because it's just like inflammation he was holding on to. And had he added exercise, which is a stressor on top of all that stress, that that time, it probably would have been the wrong answer. And then he would have gained like four pounds and then I would get yelled at. So I, I, I yeah, right. I, pre- I appreciate it. I'm going to back <laughs> you up on that. So with my own personal. So yesterday I was super frustrated. I woke up, my HRV was through the roof. Like I, I just, and I felt like shit and um hadn't dropped any weight um i'm currently doing a 30 day my i'm doing a 30 day challenge with everybody that we're doing a 30 day mm-hmm. challenge for so yesterday felt like crap and re- recovery was crap and it had been like consistently getting worse so finally i broke and was like okay i'm gonna take a walk so her and i went on a walk i didn't do anything i took a nap um didn't change my diet uh woke drank a bunch of water um uh, woke up this morning i had dropped two pounds it felt yeah. dropped two pounds and awesome. felt great you know what i mean so so it can be done but again i'm still i'm still eating in a deficit you know what i mean i'm, I'm still eating in a, yeah. in, a, in a slight deficit but i hit all my protein numbers you know i always start there and then i just listen i listened to what my body needed took a break recovered and then here I am today and I, you know, I already crushed my first workout. And then, you know, when we get done with this, I'm going to go crush my second one. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, that's that. So it, it works. It's so useful. And I know we were saying HRV through the roof, which high HRV is good. I meant resting heart rate um, because then if yeah. resting heart rate. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know what I meant? So um, I wish my it, HRV was, the, in the, was in the crapper. That's what I meant to say. I was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I, I've been trying to get it higher, but then then you get like motivation from people, and they're like, "Damn, I want my sleep score to be good. I want my you know uh, readiness score to be good because it'll give you both of those, and it'll be like, yeah, don't train. And then people will try to push through it, and the next day you're like, yeah, asshole, I shouldn't have done that. You know what yeah. I've noticed? Even I do that. <laughs> it's both both her and I because we're we're actually tracking her stuff while being pregnant, which is super interesting. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, because it's it changes everything, right? It, and uh, so for both of us, it's made even though sleep has always been a priority, but it now we have actual tangible data that we can go. Uh, yeah, babe, it's time to go to bed. Like, let's go to bed earlier. Yeah. Let's sleep more, you know, so that we can do more during our day. So anyways, enough, enough of that. Well, I don't want to keep you, keep you any longer. Any, uh, any, any final things that you want to add? Where can people find you? What are you doing? I'm on the IG at T H E L E Gilbert, A L I. Uh, that's really where I spend most time. I won't answer you on Twitter and Facebook. I'm there too. <laughs> All please, my posts please. go to Twitter and the- 
<laughs> at least you're honest. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, like I'll get a message. I'm like, oh, they sent this in August. Oops. <laughs> Charlie loves Twitter, but I can't like it's too much. And then I downloaded TikTok. I was like, why did I do this? My my guys are not on TikTok. <laughs> Fifty year old men are not on TikTok. Uh, although I think that if you really put applied some a little bit of effort on TikTok, you'd be hilarious on TikTok. It would be great. Maybe I, I want, I do, I, like I was told that they have dance tutorials, which I totally need because I think I could dance way better than I actually can. So if I have somebody I can copy, we, we can try that. And there then we go. can go into certain like, you know, diatribes about dicks. Uh, there, it, could be, it could be a dick TikTok. It, it could, and then I'll get <laughs> pulled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, immediately. It's over before you like, it even You're start. banned. <laughs> well, well, thanks but for coming thank on. Thank you. Yeah, it was, it's always, it's good catching up and uh, tell Charlie, I said, what's up. I will. And then, uh, yeah. And then go, everybody go fight, go follow Ali G and, and uh, all of her dick memes. And I will have to <laughs> get all of those so I can put this in the podcast. <laughs> I'll send you some. <laughs> all right, excellent. <laughs> Thank all you. Right. Bye guys. Hey guys. Thanks for enjoying that uh, podcast with us. Uh, Man, she's got lots of jokes. She's a funny girl, but she's also a very, very smart coach and a wealth of information. So go follow her on Instagram. Apparently, we don't need to follow her on Twitter because that does nothing, but go follow her on Instagram. She posts a lot of funny stuff, and she is very, very smart. And she's got a very smart husband as well. So uh, thanks for listening. Share this with a friend. And if you know someone or yourself, uh, might be interested in any of this thing, please hit up Core Med at an at a minimum, get your blood tested and we'll see you guys on the next episode.